How's it going everyone? Liam from Gaming Master Race here and welcome to July's pickup video from the new house. So there's going to be a gaming room tour and a games library tour. That's going to be coming a little bit later in the month so keep a lookout for that one. Uh, as of July's, as for July's pickups, I've, uh, I didn't think I had a very good month to be perfectly honest with you but I think I had a better month than I realised. Um, they're not really that interesting in the games but you know they are what they are. I'm quite happy, well, I'm happy with one in particular so let's crack on. We'll go through um, some of the games that I've got. So, starting off uh, on the Nintendo Switch, um, I guess with July being gone, most Nintendo Switch owners will probably know what this one's going to be, um, and it's Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Uh, it's still in its uh, wrapper because I haven't had a chance to play it because I've still been playing the Mass Effect trilogy, I'm now on Mass Effect 3. So once I've finished that I may get round to uh, playing Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword anyway. Um, to be perfectly honest, this, has, this wasn't my um, favourite Legend of Zelda game. This is actually one of my least favourite Legend of Zelda games, and it was partially because, well, it was mostly because of the motion controls on the Nintendo Wii. Um, these, they say that they've been improved for the Switch, so time can only tell. I'm probably going to give it a go with the joypad as well, because that was one of the reasons why I wanted to get it again, was to try it with the joypad and see if that improved things. Um, I bought this from Shop2, and this actually cost me £40.71. pence. Uh, and it did actually come with this really cool steel tin, which is also still in its wrapper. And it also came with a really nice key ring too. So, yep. That, uh, obviously, I played it on Nintendo Wii and I did enjoy it. It was, it was an okay game. I just didn't like the motion controls anyway. The story's brilliant, other than that. So, moving on, we're sticking with Nintendo. And we're going <laughs> to... This one is uh, probably not surprising, actually, considering my recent pickups. But it's... Uh, Wheel of Fortune on the NES this time, so this is actually a US game. Um, this was never actually released in the UK because it's the US version of Wheel of Fortune. The UK version never had its own video game. But uh, yeah, I really got into Wheel of Fortune recently. Me and me and uh, me and the wife actually were watching quite a lot of them on Netflix and just kind of got into it from there. And like you know, I really enjoy playing it and wanting to actually play it. Um, other than just watching it on television and this, these are the closest that we'll ever get so yeah this is actually a decent little game obviously graphically it's not very impressive but that's not what you play Wheel of Fortune for the graphics you play it just to solve the puzzles and play with friends so decent one to have and this one only cost me uh, $5.99 from a private seller on eBay as well Right, let's stick with uh, that kind of theme and we'll move on to the Nintendo Wii. I've only got one NES game this month, uh, but moving on to the Nintendo Wii, I've got Wheel of Fortune. Uh, this time, this one has like a virtual Pat Sajak and Vanna White, um, but it's a little bit more um, involved, a little bit more traditional uh, um, and a bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, I guess traditional to the actual um, actual game show itself. You know, it's got all the music and everything. It's pretty cool. So it kind of helps um, with the immersion of actually playing real life Wheel of Fortune. Um, so I don't know if you've noticed here, but it comes with um, something called Wii Speak, and I <laughs> I bought a Wii Speak as well, and that only cost me a fiver. So um, I played. I tried playing it with this, but you have to shout. Quite literally, have to shout um, to for it to hear what you're saying and even if you say like you know shout s or something like that it would say did you say f and you have to end up confirming what you've just said with the Wii remote anyway so it's actually quicker not to use Wii speak so that was kind of a waste of money a bit crap um, but anyway wheel on on the Wii only cost me three pound 26 can't go wrong um, it doesn't have the disc in there because it's actually in the Nintendo Wii U at the minute um, but it's got its instruction manual so perfect complete copy there for £3.26. Okay, uh, so let's um, move on to the Xbox now. So I bought a couple of games on the OG Xbox. Um, first off is Amped. Uh, so this was, um, yeah, I mean during the kind of tradition, like the phase, like the, um, like the, 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 the phase in which the PS one and the Xbox was kind of released. Um, snowboarding games were quite popular, so you had your, your 1080 snowboarding on the N64, then you had your cool borders on the PlayStation, and obviously Xbox had amped. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a decent decent snowboarding game actually. Uh, it's complete as well. Um, this one came from Music Magpie, and they, this one sent me back 
two pound twenty three. So it's quite quite decent price to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I'll probably play this a little bit more. I didn't get a chance to play it originally when it was first released, so I'll give this one a, a, a play a bit more when I get some time. So looking forward to that. <clears throat> Stumbling over me words, sticking with the erms and ers. Um, we've got another Xbox game, and this one is Top Spin Tennis. Now, I used to have this when I originally owned the Xbox, and I absolutely adored it. It was such a great game. I spent so much time on it. Um, interestingly, though, um, putting this into my Xbox as is today, when I go to play, it tells me that I can't play it unless I've got a DVD um, sensor plugged into the controller port, in, in, into a controller port. So I can't play this at the minute, hence this is why there's no gameplay footage. Uh, down uh, down here or down there. I can't remember which corner it's going to be because um, I can't really quite see. I think it's going to be this corner, if I'm perfectly honest. Anyway, um, yeah, so I can't. I haven't been able to play this just yet because it won't let me. The Xbox won't let me play it for some reason. So I guess I'll have to buy a DVD remote and see if it works with that plugged in. I don't know if it's a problem with the Xbox. But anyway, this is complete as is. Uh, again, it's from Music Magpie. It was uh, a two for only got 5% off, I think it was. And this one cost me £2.37 as well. Um, I say as well. The last one cost me two pound twenty-three. This one cost me two pound thirty-seven. It's kind of, I guess, Music Magpie buying from Music Magpie is kind of like your CEX roulette, as I've seen other people doing, because you don't know whether or not this is complete. You just have to take a, you have to take a guess with it. And luckily, every game I've bought from uh, from Music Magpie so far has been complete. So yeah, so one hundred percent record so far with them. Right, moving on to Sega, um, we've got the. We'll start with the Mars system, and I think when I did my um, Olympic gold Master System challenge, sorry Ollie, um, I did mention that I got this, and it was Olympic gold. So, yep, it, it's it's the one which says the limited edition free souvenir pack. I'm, I suspect that they all have this on them, and this one did indeed come with the free souvenir um, instruction manual, and it comes with the instruction manual, which is in almost mint condition if I'm perfectly honest apart from a little um, bit of curling at the corners it's in superb condition and yeah I mean the cartridge has a little bit of a scuff on it but other than that um, and I'll show you what I mean let's move this uh, a bit closer to the camera hopefully you can see there that's where the scuff is not sure if you can see I can't see because the camera is facing me so yeah Olympic gold only cost four pounds and five pence so you can't really go wrong for that um, it's in excellent condition apart from not having a tag at the top as well um, and I have played the hammer throw on this and the 100 meter run as per my master system challenge and it's a superb little game of course it does wear you out and Geordie Slasher Gaming said that he couldn't get um, enough of the fact that I was um, tapping the buttons really fast and making lots of sex noises when I was playing this game so if you haven't changed if you haven't checked out the master system challenge and you fancy a laugh then head on over and watch the video. Sticking with Sega, we'll uh, go move on to the Sega Mega Drive now, and I bought a game called Cyberball. Um, I don't think this was on my wish list. I think I just happened to pass across it and just buy it, and I think it may have been to do with the price. Again, from a private seller, this... Uh, oh, actually, this one cost me £10. I'm not really too sure why, but I guess it must have been on my wish list, if I'm perfectly honest, but it is complete. I mean, when I buy... All, I've said this a million times, but every time I uh, purchase a Sega Mar System game or a Sega Mega Drive game, I will almost always go for a complete copy um, and yeah I mean I, I, have, I haven't played this as of making this video yet and I'm going to be recording all the gameplay footage after I probably should do it before I kind of wanted to get the recording section out of the way first but it just looks like um, American football if I'm perfectly honest but just obviously maybe with robots so um, I'll check it out and you'll see the video playing anyway so you can get an idea for yourself but yeah again cost me £10 from a private seller so yeah adds to the collection I'm sure all oh, right. Okay, so this one is the gem of the pickups video. To be perfectly honest, now when I perch, well, let me just tell you what it is. Right. Okay. It's Sonic CD. Really, really happy to have this in my collection because it is one I've been after. Um, the second I got, well, even before I got the Mega CD, I've always wanted Sonic CD and Mega CD in my collection, and now I've finally got Me uh, Sonic CD. So other than a couple of cracks on the back of the case. Um, which I think may have been shown in the eBay listing. This actually only cost me £45. Now, 
I was a, I was dubious from the word go from this because these mostly go for eighty pounds. They do not go for forty five. This was nearly half the price of what the eBay listings were, and I don't know if you can see, but it is in excellent condition. And I open it up, and as you can see, the instruction manual's there, and it is in excellent condition. So how about the CD? Now you're not, I'm not going to, you're not going to be able to see this. There's no way that's going to be picked up, I think. But it's it's not in great condition at all. It's a lot of light scratches, a lot, a lot of light scratches. There, there doesn't appear to be any deep scratches, but there is a lot of light scratches. And it smells like mint. And why does it smell like mint? Because I used the toothpaste technique to try and uh, fix it, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I must admit, when I when I put it in for the first time, it, it does play, um, but the, the, the intro does it did skip. When I tried it after the toothpaste technique, it doesn't skip and it does play. However, I've only tried it once and I haven't tried it twice, so um, I'm going to be recording footage after this anyway. So I'll find out whether or not that it skips again. So as far as I'm aware, it plays. I've played a couple of levels. I've played um, Act 1 and Act 2 of Palm Tree Panic, which is the first two levels, and I'll play it again after this. But it does play and it is in the collection and there's Sonic CD for £45, which as is at the minute because it does play is an absolute bargain so really really happy to have that in the collection right next lot um, I have which is seven games they're all Super Nintendo so we'll move on <laughs> to Super Nintendo the first one is Winter Gold so this one actually only said I'm going to be going back to my cheat sheet right here which tells me all my prices because there's no way I'm going to remember these this one cost me £10 as well and I had a lot of trouble getting this to work. Um, you know, it was quite filthy in the in the cartridge slot. I don't know if that's being picked up or not, whether that's um, blurry. But yeah, it was filthy in there and I cleaned it and I tried it after I cleaned it and it still didn't work. I literally got the isopropyl alcohol and sprayed it directly in there after I tried cleaning it with um, uh, a cotton bud after my fifth try. Uh, eventually I got it to work after like the seventh time so I have got it to work it does take convincing um, and it's an okay game I, I, I've tried to I've tried the skiing event and I've tried a bobsleigh event and it's got some really nice animations in there um, and the graphics are pretty decent you know okay 3d graphics doesn't use a super FX chip or anything like that so it's an okay game um, I'll probably play it with some friends but other than that it's just a, a limp it was on my wish list and I think the reason why it was on my wish list is because I saw the graphics and the animations that look really impressive for us 16-bit console so again that cost me 10 pounds so a bit devious with that one as well it does work but just about so I'll give we'll soon find out when I try it again so moving on we've got uh, Olympic Olympic summer games this time so this this winter gold I don't know who this one was developed by but um, this um, Olympic summer games was developed by US gold and this was from another again this was from a private seller but this one only cost me five pounds and this one worked straight off the bat I mean I must admit all of these Super Nintendo games bar one have actually been quite filthy in the um, in the cartridge slot there so they've taken quite a bit of cleaning and whenever I buy a new Super Nintendo game and a new Mega Drive game I always clean the, the contacts with isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds anyway to make sure that they're clean before going into my Mega SG or my Super NT to, so that they don't make the the contacts there dirty um, but it does play and it's a decent game again it's a button basher and it's an Olympic game what can you expect there are quite a few events on here and again the graphics are actually quite decent I think it's more of an isometric view um, on the Super Nintendo version but again you'll see on the video which is playing anyway haven't tried out many events other than the 100 meter run but I will play that some more especially with some friends so yeah okay um, next up let's go with this one I'm trying to do them in a specific order um, I've got Mario is missing uh, again not really I don't really care too much about the game itself it's just an educational game uh, in which you play as Luigi going through streets I think when you start off I think you're going through the streets of Rome and it gives you facts about the area that you're in and stuff I haven't got much further than that to be perfectly honest I will probably play it some more but it had to be perfect it, to be if I'm honest it is a game that I wanted in my collection because it's a Mario game but it's a game I don't really care that's in my collection all at the same time it's a bit of a weird one but again I'm happy to have it it did only cost me eight pounds it was um, again one of those things where it was a buy it now um, listing and I clicked watch and I left it and then the seller made me an offer and I think it was originally up for £11 so I, I just took the £8 offer 
So yeah, again, have, happy to have it in my collection. I will give it another go, but it's a Mario game, so I mean, despite the fact it is an educational one. Right, okay, so last four now, we've got uh, Dragon's Lair is the next one. Obviously, this is a well-known arcade title known for using laser discs in the arcade and being, I think, one of like the first games to use laser disc and have these like amazing animations um, playing whilst, whilst going through it. I've never actually played Dragon's Lair, the, the real game, but uh, I think I do have it on Xbox 360. If not, I might buy it on Xbox One and maybe play it on that. But yeah, I mean, this is a, this is just a side-scroller platformer anyway, and it's still really difficult. I know the arcade version was uh, notorious for its difficulty, and the same is with this, I think. <laughs> you know, this is really difficult too, from what I've played of it so far. And uh, Dragon's Lair actually cost me £9. Decent, decent enough price. Again, I think it was um, I made an offer, and that accepted so can't really can't really go wrong for that it's pretty decent this is the problem now most of the games I'm collecting um, they're not cheap anymore I've gotten I've gone I've got my cheap games that I wanted um, and now I'm getting the expensive ones and I'm not just collecting games for the sake of collecting them I'm collecting the games that I do kind of want in my library as well there has to be a limit you know I can't just buy every single game I see I'm not going to do that I'm going to buy the games that I do want in my library and I will eventually get around to playing one way or another Next up is Pack Attack on the Super Nintendo again, and this is like a puzzle game, pretty cool, kind of like Tetris style blocks that come down with ghosts. You have to try and link the ghosts together and eventually you'll get a Pac-Man come down um, within your blocks and you have to link that so that he eats all the ghosts to get combos and get the highest scores. It's a really good little game actually, quite addictive. Pack Attack only cost me £7, so again, quite a decent price for this one and it's a decent game too. I think it might be on the Sega Mega Drive, but I'll always opt for the Super Nintendo version because the Super Nintendo version it was quite frankly a better console than the Sega Mega Drive. Um, James, um, who is um, Super Crab Boy, will disagree, but I don't care because I know I'm right. Okay, Super Nintendo again, and this is an expensive one, but it's a game I had when I was a kid. Sold it, never got it back until now, and that's Doom. <laughs> Everyone had Doom, and Doom's been released on everything, but um, the Super Nintendo, when this was released on the Super Nintendo, it was it was really quite um, groundbreaking, and in fact, actually, I've got a picture of me um, at Christmas wearing my Power Rangers pajamas. And although I'm holding up a book of Killer Instinct moves and Mortal Kombat 3 moves, um, so if you look down in the picture, there's actually you can see a perfect box copy of Doom sitting on the floor. And uh, yeah, uh, I sold it, but uh, I got it back again. And this was not cheap. This was £20. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't come cheap, but I didn't think £20 was too bad. I was trying to, excuse me, win an auction, but it kept going to £20 plus. So to actually get this for dead on 20 I'm happy with that. And it's a great game. It's a rough port, but I mean, you know, for its time on the 16-bit era, it was really quite phenomenal and uh, something that hadn't been seen on 16-bit consoles, really. So really, really cool. Love to have Doom, love a bit of Doom. And the final game is a little bit controversial, and I haven't added it to my collection because it's a reproduction card. And I've taken a risk on this one, and it's Earthbound. Now, the reason why I've taken a risk on this is simply because anyone who collects games will know that this game was never released in the UK. It was only ever really released in Japan and America. And if you're looking at buying an American car only for copy, you're looking at paying at nearly 200 plus pounds. Um, and quite frankly, I'm not going to do that. Uh, as much as I want an official copy of this game, this is the next best thing. So this cost me 18 pounds, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yes, this cost me 18 pounds. And it runs absolutely fine. You know, it's, the save states all work. Everything works as if it was an actual cartridge. The only difference is it really isn't. And you can tell, you know, the quality on the sticker is not great. Um, but, you know, it's still convincing enough that if someone were to see it in your collection, they'd go, oh my God, you've got a copy of Earthbound. But it, it isn't an actual copy. It is a reproduction cart. Um, and so for that reason, I haven't actually included this in my collection. So I've got an app in which you go through, um, you know, it's, it stores all your games and you can add everything in so that you don't buy duplicates and stuff like that. And I have not added this in. But that's something I want to ask you lot out there, to be honest, is do I add this to my collection knowing it's a rep reproduction cart? Because quite frankly, I don't think I should. Um, so that's a question. Does it matter whether it's reproduction? I still have a copy. I don't have a copy on Wii U as well, which is software, which is a digital copy. But, you know, I, I personally don't think so. 
anyway that's it that's all my games for this month um next up we're already in august so hopefully i've already bought some games so we'll see how it goes to be perfectly honest i'm running out of games i was looking on ebay today and i was thinking i don't want any of these games but there are some i do want and i'm waiting i've actually got a bid on one actually i don't even know if i want it but i'll soon find out and it'll be my gem for the month i think but anyway if you like the video hit like and hit subscribe it helps it helps us out a ton and you can always talk to me on Twitter at GamingMasterRA2. Until the next video, thanks very much for watching.